I'm Dump Truck TS, and welcome back to Mapping for Quake. This is the third episode in a series of custom texturing tutorials. The first episode was an overview, the second one covered WAD tools. In this third episode, we're going to talk about bringing in external textures, uh, importing them into WADs, and dealing with the Quake palette. It's very limited with only 256 colors. Uh, but there are tricks, and you're going to see how to bring in and use higher resolution textures. And we'll also deal with those little devil's Fulbright pixels that haunt texture artists. Now, before we begin, I just want to say, I misspoke so many times in this video, and I have to apologize. I always say Fulbright textures, and for some reason I can't get it through my head. What I mean most of the time, not every time, but most of the time I mean Fulbright pixels. So you're going to hear me say Fulbright textures a bunch of times. I didn't feel like going back and re-recording and editing out all these st stupid mistakes I made. So anyway, when I say Fulbright textures, I mean pretty much Fulbright pixels, except for when I mean Fulbright textures. You'll see. So I've downloaded this, uh, you know, this texture file from a free texture website, and it's 256 by 256, and it's a 32-bit uh, file. So a lot of colors in here, a lot of variations. So I'm going to open up Texmex, and I'm going to hit this button called Import, and I will navigate to that guy. Where was it? Uh, Castle Walls. Now you can see it's changed the color pretty dramatically because remember the Quake palette is only 256 colors. A 32-bit image is, you know, what, millions of colors, right? The program has tried its hardest to kind of match the colors as best it can. You can see a dramatic difference when I bring this image over here. You know, you can just see how much it's changed. And we're going to get to that. There is a way that you can display this in the newer, more modern Quake engines. But for now, you can see how the palette conversion is just kind of ugly and nasty. So here's what the texture looks like in game. And I just want to note that um, I have R underscore Fulbright set to one. So there are lights on the level, but I'm not showing you the lighting just yet because I want to talk about that in a minute. Here's how the texture works. As you can see, it's a 256 by 256 texture. And so the scale here doesn't really work uh, for me anyway. And it's also not a tiled texture either. So you can see the seams where it ends and starts and all that. These are all things you got to think about is the size of the texture. Does it look right? Uh, does the texture density, pixel density look correct in game? And so you'll have to resize your images and kind of make those creative decisions. But I'm not going to get into that stuff because I am not an expert. All right, so next I've downloaded this image from the internet and it's also a 32-bit file. And this has some kind of funky dimensions here. It's 910 by 296. So I'm gonna copy this guy and let's go into Wally, -E, and I'll try to paste this. And I'm getting an error message. It says dimensions of the file are not evenly divisible by 16. So in order to bring these in, Quake textures need to be divisible by 16, right? So what I've done already is I've made a version that is 912 by 304. And, uh, you know, it does, if you notice, there's a little bit of a shift in the size there. But this is just me ballparking it. I'm, I'm sure there's other ways of um, figuring the math out. But anyway, so now this version will import. So I'm going to hit copy, paste is new, and let's take a look at this. All right, so on the bottom of the screen is the original 32-bit version of this, and the top ver is what the, the palette conversion in Wally is. You can see there's all this dithering here. So let's take a look at this in-game. So I'd mentioned a few minutes ago that, you know, we're looking at this map uh, with this setting R underscore Fulbright 1 set. So I'm going to turn off that off and show you the light map. So there's a light in this corner. And uh, but everything else is pretty dark and we're in shadows here. And now you can see I had mentioned in the original video about Fulbright textures. Those are those last two rows in the Quake palette that are used for things like flames and rune keys and things like that. Well, the, you know, Wally -E and Texmex are going to try to map these colors as closely as possible. You can also see Fulbright pixels in this uh, other image that we brought in. So this is one of those gotchas when you're working with external files and you're bringing in external files into the Quake palette. So you, if you know where this pixel is, you could paint that a different color using Wally -E or, or you know, Photoshop or whatever your image editor is, as long as you knew. But something like this is just going to be a disaster. 
So in that case, you're going to want to use uh, another application called D Fulbright to get rid of these Fulbright textures. So I've downloaded D Fulbright, and uh, before we begin, I want to make it very clear, you're not going to want to run D Fulbright on your entire WAD file, because what if you have lights or other textures in there? So you're not going to want to drag and drop your entire wad on here. So there is a workflow and it is described in the readme so you should take a look at that. For this wad it's only one texture. So I'm gonna, or it's a couple textures actually. So I'm gonna just drag and drop that on here. It makes a copy of the wad and it adds default bright to the end of it. So let's look at that. It's found these colors and mapped it to a non full bright. So as you can see, uh, you're not seeing those little snowflake pixels any longer. And because there's no light over here, uh, you can't even see uh, the full brights any longer. So I'll just hit I'll, hit, I'll fire my gun here. Now the workflow that's outlined in the readme, you use a certain command line and it'll generate targa files that are kind of a preview file. The textures are dim, but in, it highlights the full bright texture so you can see and go through those targa files and really see where your problems are. And then you'll make a text file and you'll run the D Fulbright on just the textures that you need to run them on. It sounds involved, but it's actually not that hard. It's a command line tool, but hey, this is gonna fix your Fulbright pixels without a lot of headache. So earlier I said I'd show you how to use external textures. So we have these two textures that I've downloaded. They're the right pixel dimensions, right? They're divisible by 16. We've made a wad from them and you can see the limitations of the 256 color palette. In order to edit with external textures, you're gonna wanna make this wad and it is gonna be ugly. But what we can do is, if we place these textures in a certain file format, which is Targa, into a certain folder under Quake, you know, modern game engines will look at those folders before they look at the wad. You still have to make a wad at this point in time because Trench Broom can't yet edit with these things. So if you had, even if the files are where they're supposed to be, you still need a wad in order to see it in the editor. Let's take a look at this texture. The name over here is Quake. Trench Broom is seeing this from the wad that we created. And then same here, right? This, this is called Castle Walls SH. But what I've done is I've made these into Targa files, the original. Now I didn't take the WAD versions, I took the original versions, opened them in Photoshop and saved them as TGA files. These are 24-bit Targa files that I've saved the original files to because they were JPEG files. So let's take a look and see what that looks like in game. Now I added a light so you could see a little better, but now if you notice we're looking at that kind of greenish color that we saw early on in the video. So we are now seeing these are 24 bit color. You notice there's no dithering here on this Quake 4 one. It's displaying the entire range of color. So this is how you can use external textures. Now the original versions of Quake did not have this capability. So Quake.exe, WinQuake, and uh, GLQuake could not do this. So we're talking about Quake Spasm, FTE, Dark Places, Mark V. All of these engines have this capability. And these are how people make high res texture packs. So just make sure that these are under your id1 directory in a folder called textures and that the names match exactly with the names in the wad file. That's it for this episode. Now in the next one we're going to talk about creating custom textures with Wally. -E. In the meantime, you can find me on the Quake Mapping Discord or on Funk Message Board. If you have any questions, comments, feedback, whatever, leave it down below or just come find me on Discord. And as always, thanks for hanging in there. We'll see you in the next video.